Welcome back to Coast to Coast AM. Sitting in for George Norrie, I'm Dave Schrader. Joining me for the last two hours of this evening's show, Sandra London. She's published Confessions of Serial Killers and researched some of the most depraved criminal minds of our time. And after 24 years of studying the real-life monsters in cages where Murder Road comes to a dead end, Sandra declares that nothing in the true crime genre compares to the vivid and intimate account in her new book, Good Little Soldiers, a memoir of true horror. Welcome to Coast to Coast AM, Sandra London. Thank you so much for joining us this evening, Sandra. Well, thank you for having me. Well, Sandra, talk to me about Good Little Soldiers, a memoir of true horror. You went from dealing with serial killers directly to dealing with a victim here in in this story. How did this story come to your attention? All right. Um... Along the way, I've been doing quite a lot of work uh, uh, with video production, with documentaries, and uh, I was affiliated for 15 years with a filmmaker located in London, England, and then under his uh, sponsorship uh, was researching uh, mind control um, and went to a conference in 2003 of uh, survivors of United States government mind control programs. And it was at that conference that I met Stephen Griggs. At that conference, I was able to do quite a few interviews. And in the course of my work on this documentary, in fact, there were 80,000 words transcribed from interviews I did uh, with push-button killers or people who are like Diane, I would call a uh, roadkill on the MK Highway. In other words, these programs were intentional to create, uh, you know, the the uh, uh, push button killers, really, ultimately. But also along the way, they interfered with thousands of lives in uh, different ways, and for the most part, just went on and left these people behind. And I will call that roadkill on the MK Highway. And uh, we'll also count people like uh, Ted Kaczynski in that. So anyway, that's how uh, I met uh, Diane Fitzpatrick's brother, Stephen Griggs. And Stephen followed up by sending me a box of material, which... uh, Oh, you would say, like, if it was a stack of papers, it was about, oh, eight inches tall, a box full of documentation of research he'd done into his father. In that package was a typescript with the uh, title MK Ultra, and it was written by Diane. And that was the only thing among those papers that really hinted on that end of what went on there. Most of what was covered in the case regarded the homicidal maniac father and his predations. Uh, but behind that was another story that when uh, John Edgington did a documentary on uh, Diane and Stephen's stories about their father, he would not touch the uh, MK Ultra part, the things that happened in the lab and so on. He wouldn't touch it, and neither would, uh, and in the end, the uh, documentary I was working on, it was funded, and uh, the um, uh, National Geographic picked up the option, held it for a year, and then let it expire, and then went on and did a documentary on mind control from a, shall we say, a different point of view. 